Hey everyone, I'm Hot Ron Jen. I'm going to show you how I palette my pinstriping brush. First, I'm going to, I already shook my paint up pretty good. I store my one shot in these plastic bottles. You got to be very, um, they're special plastic bottles, so you just can't go find any plastic bottle and put your paint in it or you can ruin your paint, but that's a whole nother story. So, I put some paint in my medical cup right here. You can use Dixie cups if you want. I like using these. And a lot of times, this, this is how I palette my brush. And this color is Kansas City Teal by One Shot. And right out of the can, it is gorgeous to paint with. You really don't need reducer when you use this color right away. Even like when it's warm, you can probably wait like 5 minutes or 10 minutes until you start reducing. But this is how I palette my brush. I dip the paint in, dip the brush into the cup, like probably to here, and then I start palletting. And I go back and forth, back and forth, all the way down, all the way down. I don't do this. You want to make sure your hairs are covered. Now, if your brush looks like this, that's pretty heavy, heavily loaded. So depending on what you're going for, you can take some of that paint out by just moving a little bit to the left on your palette. And palette a little bit more. Got a little bit more hair, a little bit more out there. If you really want it dried out, pull really thin lines. But you can do thin lines with a the, with the heavy lo loaded brush too, but it's easier when there's not that much paint in it. Take a little bit more out. But if I wanted to um, use reducer, I'm going to move that here so you can see. So let's say I was working a while and I start feeling the paint gumming up on me. or You, you want a nice drag. You don't want to be ice skating. If you have too much, this is going to be a lot of thinner. If you have a big puddle of thinner here you're gonna feel it's gonna feel like glass and you don't want that that's way too much thinner when you have way too much thinner the paint consistency gets really see-through and also you can uh, get some bad adhesion with that so if I wanted to work some of that reducer out of my brush I'll go to a new area and also put more paint on my brush go to a new area and I'm just trying to work that reducer out of my brush. When you start feeling a nice pull on your brush, but not not a heavy pull, that's pretty where much where I'm happy with it. And then I can pull a line. But usually I'm always dipping into the paint and then just the tip, just like right here, into the reducer, and then going. And that's how I reduce. I don't put the reducer in the paint. I just, this is how I've done it since I started. And this way you can adjust. Let's say like you're going to do a long, long line. You can set up your paint in your reducer to do that. If you really want a skinny, delicate, delicate line. You can set up your brush to do that and adjust on your palette. And also when you're working on a palette of this size and you're working and it's hot and humid, your, your paint's going to start drying in your palette spot. So you can start in one corner and go over and over and then over again and use up the whole entire page because after a while the drying agents start to work. And if that happens, you'll get more pull on your brush and that'll like try to pull the hairs out when you're palleting back and forth if it starts setting up really really hard on your on your palette paper and also try to get the glossy magazines the solvents stay on top of the page rather than soaking into the page but you don't really want that happening like if I flip this page the next page isn't going to be compromised the next page is fine. You see all the solvents trying to work on that? They're not coming through to the next page. Where if you were using a regular paper page, like phone book paper, the next page would be already started with your solvents and be compromised. So there you go.
that's how I palette my brush. Hope that helps you.